Hello YouTube! So, like a while ago I put out a poll of what my next video subject would be. And specifically, in what era the subject would take place. The overwhelming majority of you voted the Meretic era, the era that I am simply not good at. So, I had two choices at that point. One, quit YouTube. As you noticed for the last two weeks, I tried that, but I could not since I love you guys so much. So there was only a one option left, do something on the Meretic era. So. Let's talk about the creation and early Meretic history of the Argonians, since I for most part skipped that in my lore lectures. And for the people that say, but Zork, is that partly Dawn era and not Meretic era? It's my channel, go screw yourself. So, Argonians. As I said, I talked about and will talk about the origin of the races a lot in my Big History lore lecture series. However, I so far overlooked the Argonians a bit, so let's make up for that by talking about them a little bit more. That said, this video will be complementary to the lore lecture series about the Dawn and Meretic era, so watch the Dawn era after or before this video and watch the Meretic era one when it comes out next week. So as I talked about in the lore lecture and partly in my genetics video, the intelligent races of Nurn almost all likely originate from the great ancestor race, the Elnofei, who later split into groups and evolved into the races that we know. But that's the story for the lore lecture, so watch those for that. Now, interestingly enough, there's one race, it doesn't quite work that way, and that's the Argonian. Now, interestingly enough, in the very beginning there were a couple of original races on Nurn, one being the Elnofei, and most likely the other being the Dragons, and then there were also the other precursor animals and precursor vegetation of the current vegetation and animals that we see on Nurm. However, there was another race that existed on Nurn around this time, the Hist. Intelligent tree-like beings that were also among the first creatures to exist on Nurn. Some even say that they were the first, before even the Elnofei. When the Elnofei got split into groups, the Hist stuck together and slowly they created for, some, for, the, for themselves quite a domain on Nurn. But then the Elnofei got back together after their split, and the separated groups did not get along with each other too well, as the Elnofei just started fighting each other in a war that would reshape the face of Nurn. Unfortunately, the Hist, who couldn't move, who couldn't do anything because they were trees, they were eventually collateral damage to the war of the Elnofei, and most of the Hist's realm was destroyed during the Elnofei wars. After this catastrophic event, the Hist pulled their resources and had all the remaining trees working together to create a creature that would serve them, protect them, see the world for them and walk and fight where they would... Well, they just couldn't. <laughs> the creature they created would become, become known as the Sex Leel, or in common tongue of the other races of Nurn, simply Argonian. Now, this is all quite vague in historical records, we don't know much about it at all. But this is how I've pieced it together in the most logical way possible. Like, for disclaimer, we don't know exactly whether the Argonians were conceived before or after the Elnofei War, or exactly why they were conceived. And we don't know exactly when the Elnofei War was, but the creation of the Argonians seems to me like a logical reaction after they have just been decimated in a war, and they would need a defender race for the future. That's my personal interpretation of things, but it's not been confirmed, so that's as a disclaimer. But it seems like the most logical way for me. Now, we do know that the Hist created the Argonians as essential slaves of the Hist, bound to them to grow up, as they designed the Argonians in such a way that they cannot grow up in a stable way without the involvement of the Hist. The Hist are also fully in control of the Argonian biology, as it is noted that the Argonians lay eggs for reproduction. However, the Hist can apparently change their entire reproduction system, as there have been times in history when the Hist changed the Ar Argonians to reproduce in largely the same way that mammals do in times of crisis. They m modified the Argonian in such a way that the female Argonians could bear children themselves instead of lay laying eggs, not needing the Hiss to survive. Only then, probably to later change it back to the egg system once the uh, crisis had been averted. Because you have to understand that using the egg system, the Hiss can keep complete control over the Argonians. As to create a has healthy, stable and good functioning Argonian within Argonian society, the eggs need to hatch in a hatching pool close to a history, and a child needs to drink hist sap to be able to grow up in a natural and easy way. 
and to eventually die in peace as their souls return to the Hist, as it is said that they also gain their souls so their very beings from the Hist. Now it's possible for an Argonian to grow up without this, we have seen this multiple times throughout the game series, however, the Argonians that grow up isolated from the Hist will become outcasts in their own society, as the ability to learn the extremely complicated Argonian language, participate in the complicated rituals and other religious things, and much more, are all dependent on if you have grown up with the Hist sap or not. These Argonians that grew up isolated from the Hist are able to function in normal society, so if we're within other races society, for example within the Empire. Just not back home, as they have their connection to their Hist extremely severed. This means that any Argonian would want to grow up close to the Hist, because otherwise they will never be accepted into their own society. However, when they have grown up in proximity to the Hist, the Hist can do some pretty amazing things to even Argonians that have completely grown up. For example, we know that with the Hist influence, they are able to even change genders sometimes, multiple times during their lifespans, and change all kinds of things about, each other, about themselves. Now, we don't know much of early Argonian history, other than that it has been kind of decaying over the years, if that's the right word for it. You see, throughout the early Moretic era and middle Moretic era, the Argonians had a great and high functioning society that is said to have even been one of the most modern at the time. They lived in stone cities, built great structures like the Zen Mir pyramids, and had a very advanced magical standard, with great rituals that some can't even reproduce today. Now, Argonians they all stayed within that community at that point. Nobody left Black Marsh, and they lived in relative peace with the Hist. But then, near the end of the Moretic era, or at the beginning of the first era, we don't exactly know when the shift went, an unexplained regression in their culture took place. Instead of the Great Pyramid Society and Great Stone Wall Society, the Argonians went to a more tribal society with more primitive housing, clothing, rituals and technology. Why that happened? We have no idea at all. Perhaps the Hist modified them because they were becoming too independent from them, or perhaps building pyramids in marshlands was way too tiring and they just thought, well, we'll be okay in huts. Okay, well, it's not that bad in Black Marsh right now, but you get my meaning. Their society took a severe downgrade. Either way, that downgrade hasn't really ever been reversed as far as we know, and all we know is that the current fourth era government of the Argonians, the Ancelil, is using the elements of the old Zenmir culture like using their old pyramids. Why, we don't know. Perhaps they want to return to the old glory days? But that's not the subject of today's video, as we're dealing with the Moretic era stuff. And as you see, there isn't a lot of it, as we don't know any specific events that happened in Argonian culture during the Moretic era, or any specific people that lived in Argonian culture. All we know is that they were a very advanced society, and at one point, they got at war with the Aeliads. And it's said that the Aeliads may be part of the reason why their society took such a big hit in terms of technology and in terms of how advanced they were, that the Aeliad culture just completely destroyed their ancient civilization. But I doubt that that's the only reason for it happening. But that's the only hint that we have at why, the, at why their civilization since the Moretic Era has been regressing. Well, at least regressed from the Moretic Era to the First Era. We know however that during the Moretic Era not all the ancient rituals went lost and we know that some of the ancient rituals from the Zen Mir society even prevailed into the Second Era. But after the Second Era we haven't heard much of it. There had even been a period in the late Moretic Era or maybe early Fourth Era, again we don't know exactly when the great regression of their society hit it, that basically the Argonians were becoming a sort of rarity within Black Mars where they were even well, by the other inhabitants of Black Marsh, because back then the Argonians weren't the only ones living in Black Marsh. For example, the Lilmoth, like fox-like beings that are a bit like the Khajiit, but then foxes, they also inhabited Black Marsh. And to them, well, they didn't see much Argonians back at the time. So, what exactly happened to their culture, we don't know. And perhaps we'll learn in a future game or in future lore. But that said, that's basically the only thing that we can say about the Argonian culture at the time. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe, do all those kind of things. If uh, you want to go and put a personal contact with me, there is my Discord and Instagram in the description. There also in the description is my Patreon, you can support me in a more personal way there. You get your name at the end of every video, you get small Patreon bonuses like my soundtrack. You also get access to the lore lectures, which we hold like a few times every couple of months. 
Like, you get access to them via YouTube, but you can attend them live during the recording if you support me on Patreon. Sorry if I made that a little bit vague, because the lore lectures are just there for everybody to watch after I've done them. With that said, I think that's an end to this video. Again, like, subscribe. I will return to my normal schedule, or at least try to. I mean, I've been kind of dead for the past two weeks, and I'll try to fix it. So, yeah, see you later.